Hey, what's up guys? So, I haven't done a programming tutorial in quite some time now, so this is probably going to be pretty rusty. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you how to make a program like this. Uh, you'll be able to hit refresh, and I'll show you all the open processes, and you'll be able to select one, and I hope, I hope you can see this well enough in the video. Uh, if you can see this red border has been put around our notepad, which was what she, we selected, and it will follow it around, just like this. Um, let's open up the calculator, hit refresh, apparently it doesn't, oh, hold on one sec, there we go, calculator, there, now we have our calculator, back to notepad, so, I'm just going to be showing you how to make this, and, uh, alright, let's get started. Alright, so, I know some of this code is going to be kind of weird, so it'll all be in the description. Just open up Visual Basic. New project, okay. We're going to set up our form with a list box and two buttons. Just like that. One button, we're going to change the text to refresh, and then the other will be reset. Alright, make the form look a little nicer. That didn't help. Alright, cool. Uh, we're going to need to add a timer to this form, and we can just set the interval to something like 10. And we're also going to need to add a second form, and this form, we're going to need the form border style, form border style as none, uh, window state maximized, transparency key, red, um, go ahead and take the text out, show in taskbar, false. And then we're going to need the back color as also red, the same red. And all we need to add to this is a group box. This will be the border around our form. And that text will be nothing. Just make it as small as it goes to get somewhere up in this corner. Cool. Alright, so let's get started on the code. Alrighty, to start out our code, we're going to double click the refresh button. And uh, listbox1.items.clear. And then this following code. For each p as process and process dot get processes. Uh, so basically we're adding a variable p and the p is a process within this list of processes so all are open processes. Uh, if p dot main window title is anything other than nothing then we're going to go listbox one dot items dot add window title. Cool. Alright, let's try that out. Hit refresh and you'll see all our open processes, including a hypercam, which I'm using to record, and notepad, which you saw earlier. Alright, so the next code we're going to add is the reset, and that's going to be timer1.stop form2.hide. Uh, listbox one dot items dot clear. That should be good. All right, double click on our list box, and this is a uh, selected index changed. And um, this code is going to be super easy. Form two dot show timer one dot start. That's it. All right, now up at the top, we're going to need um, this line of code right here. An import and it's import system dot runtime dot interrupt services. Uh, don't worry about what that means for right now. Also, uh, right under our public class form one, we're going to add this line of code. And these are both in section one in the description. You can just copy and paste them. Uh, this is a private declare function, get window rect. So basically, this is going to help us get the rectangle of our window and then this is setting up a structure for the uh, left top right and bottom of the rectangle that we're making 
All right, so now we're going to add the code for our timer. So just go ahead and double click the timer. And this will be for each p as process in process dot get processes. That should look familiar. We did it right up here. If p dot main window title equals list box one dot selected item. All right, so if the main window title it's going to go through all our processes, and if the main window title matches up with what we selected in here, then it's going to run this code. This will be in section 2 of the description. It's dimrs rect, which we have set up right up here, our uh, private structure. And then get window rect, which we have set up here as our declare function. function. Um, and that is p dot, which is our process, main window handle dot 2 and 32. Are. And then uh, we're going to resize this group box and set its location, which is right here form2.groupbox1 location equals uh, new point r.left, comma r.top, form2.groupbox.size equals new size, blah blah blah, and groupbox.text equals our list box, what we've selected in here. And then form2.bring to front. Now we're gonna add um we're gonna add in a code right before it as kind of a safety feature because if you saw on this one, well, uh, the example at the beginning of the video, it was really hard to hit the refresh button. That's because it was constantly selecting form two, so form one was always getting sent to back. Um, so we're gonna add some code that will get around that for us. And and uh, that code is as follows: the cursor dot position dot x is greater than this forms location dot x and it's less than this forms location plus its width um, and then the same thing with the y values then we're gonna just exit out a sum so this is saying that if the cursor is somewhere within the confines of the location of this form then it's just gonna exit the sub because we're probably trying to hit one of these buttons or something uh, otherwise if it's not uh, then we're gonna do our form 2 dot bring from Alrighty, now back to form 2, I forgot a few steps. Um, topmost on form 2 is going to be set to true. And then double click form 2, so it's on its uh, private sub load. And uh, just put in double buffered equals true. Alright. Now we should be done with form 2. And also done with the entire program. So go ahead and hit run. And I'm going to bring my notepad refresh, select notepad, and there you have it. There's your board around the notepad. It'll follow it around wherever it goes, and even if you resize. Sweet. Um, we're going to open up the calculator, see if we can track that too. Refresh, calculator. There it is on our calculator. Back to notepad. <coughs> so if you notice something, it's kind of a uh, it's not really getting the top of the notepad selected quite, quite right. Um, and there's a pretty simple fix to that. Double click on the timer again, and where you see it set the group box size. This is its, uh, I think it's width height. Yeah, so this is its height. We're going to add 5 to the height. And then for the location of the group box, it's y integer, we're going to just minus 5. Go ahead and hit run, see if this works. There you go. So now it has the entire program selected. Alright, cool. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Uh, so if you did like it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions about the code, or if I left something out, or if you have any suggestions for uh, future videos, just go ahead and leave that in the comments section. Alright, cool, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.